Hi, my name is Julie and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is our series where I'm reading from Al-Anon literature. So today is April 28th. Yay! So April 28th and I'll be reading from One Day at a Time in Al-Anon, Encouraged to Change. So I'll start off with One Day at a Time in Al-Anon and save Courage to Change for the end because we love Courage to Change, right? And then also at the and after that, we'll stay for serenity prayer meditation. So please stay till the end. And um, also uh, please subscribe because I upload every day so we can read together. It's, um, it's a good way to get the spiritual self-help program into our codependent type of mind so we can switch our way of thinking you know this is a program that um, we need to do every day and um in some shape or form and so uh you know al-anon is um like to iron out the rough spots of daily living because we have daily living and there are rough spots in that and um so we can have that serenity like the light happy gratitude feeling of life so that takes time and work so we're gonna do going to do the reading today, page 119, if you're following along, and their daily reflections on both books. So uh, it's a real quick, uh, quick one. Here we go. Have I the courage to face up to the problems that alcoholism has brought into my life? Hmm. Can I believe that my situation is not really hopeless and that I am capable of improving it? Can I keep myself cheerful when everything seems to be leading me to despair? The answers could be yes. That's a good answer, I hope so. So if I refuse to accept the alcoholic's responsibilities and leave them to him, Yes, regardless of the consequences, yep. So I could overcome my hopelessness by opening my eyes to the troubles other people live with, so often much worse than mine. I could bring myself to a brighter view of life if I weren't always feeling sorry for myself. And uh, despair is often a mask for self-pity. Mm. Uh, this is hard to read because I've lived my life that, this way, a lot of my life this way. Despair. It's such a hard feeling to get out of, right? Can you relate to that? That feeling of despair. Oof. I don't want to go there anymore. So three things I will practice every day from now on. One, I will stop being a crutch for the alcoholic. Okay. Two, I will not let myself concentrate on the distressing features of my present existence, but will look for the good things in it instead. Okay. Can you do that? And three, I will remind myself that self-respect can relieve me of the need for pity, my own and others. Self-respect sounds a lot better than despair. Mm. So in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. And that is from a book of common prayer that quote. So that was, uh, I felt that the whole way through, obviously, showed it to you as well. So um, can make room for what we treasure if we don't uh, if we're not the crutch for the alcoholic anymore. Not an easy, not an easy thing if that's what we've been doing for so long, right? Especially because they, they've they been depending on us, right? And um, it's really hard when we say no to that anymore because then they're, they get angry, right? Uh, sometimes they do. Sometimes they get mad and they say, that you're selfish. Uh, 
But I think once they get used to it, I'm not sure, you know, um, this is all still new to me, but the idea and the concepts is, is really sounds great. Really sounds great. I've been doing it on my, um, um, in my life and I'm finally, finally doing what I want to do. And I didn't know what I wanted to do for so long, for years. And I was like, what am I here for? What am I? It was such a despair and it was that self-pity. I didn't realize it was self-pity. It's like, I just thought it was just how, how my life is and I can't get out of it. So, um, but with Al-Anon, honestly, uh, what happened is that it has a structure. It has people that um, share um, their experience and their strength and their hope. And they're like, me too. I had something similar to that, or this is what happened with me. Um, and we're not comparing to despair. What we do is we read these readings together in the meetings, right? And then we quietly listen if someone has a share and we don't offer advice to each other. This is not advice at all. I'm not giving advice here on my channel. I'm reading, giving you my share, my experience, my strength and my hope. And you can take what you need and leave the rest. Get, say, nah, it's not for me. I don't get it. So, you know, it's, so, cause we all have our way of living and we all have our perception, right? And um, this, to me, it helps me open my perception to other ways of thought. So this way I won't think that or feel that despair because I have people to talk to. I have the meetings. I have the readings. I have the 12 steps. There's traditions as well. There's 12 traditions. There's sponsors, people to call. And they're read, I don't know. I wish I would have found it earlier, honestly, but I needed to go through whatever I went through in order to have this, um, this feeling of gratitude and humility. And um, what did I read today? Humility, perpetual quietness of heart. It's, it is to have no trouble. It is to be at rest when no one praises me. And um, it's a constant process of evolution. Love myself as I am. And I cannot be or make anyone else perfect. Um, these are just notes that I took today from a meeting. It was just amazing. Every the meetings are just full of wisdom and truth. People telling the truth, you know, Ugh, just... And feeling from the heart, you know, they're talking about things that are going on in their life and then ways that they cope that are healthy. What did I write here? I have um, using mindful journaling. Perhaps I have something to say. When I am more present, when I am enhancing myself, that I can respect and be open to what you are. And safety lies in my defenselessness. Like being defensive is um, a false safety, right? Like if you're reacting to somebody and um, safety lies in my defenselessness because it's also a self-confidence. You have this, like your ability to pause And know when you're talking to an alcoholic, active or not, um, there's a soul sickness there. So if there's an argument, um, you know, have a consideration of what we're talking about and, you know, have your point stated, which is fair. But if it comes to this heated impasse where like one person is like, no, you're wrong. Like just say, just give me a, Give me some time. I need a minute and be okay with it. Know that there, you know, there's nothing you can really um, do other than um, 
to carry yourself at that point, you know? Just the, the perpetual um, quietness of heart is that inner knowing like you're okay, no matter what, your higher power has your back. By sharing experience, strength, and hope, welcoming and giving comfort to the families and friends of the alcoholic and giving encouragement to the alcoholic. So it's, you know, we're not here to be like jerk off assholes to people, you know, we're here to also love. And that's what, you know, cause that's what, what fills us with, with purpose, right? We're gonna have a good life. In a good life, you know, we're going to have some little hiccups here and there. We're going to, um, I mean, having that connection. I mean, we don't like seeking connection outside of ourselves, right? Someone said this today also. Um, because of my restraint, um, I, can, um, I can have a better relationship with other people so that I'm not like pushing my will on someone else, right? Nor will they push their will on you, you know? You can just say, it's not for me and be cool about it, you know? Like get to the place where you're okay about it. Like having the willingness um, out of the hopeless trap. I love that willingness, right? So let's go ahead and read Courage to Change. Courage to Change. So April 28th, page 119. Here we go, dive in. So sometimes the things we consider our greatest weaknesses prove to be our greatest strengths. They provide us with opportunities for growth that we would never have had otherwise. All my life, I prayed for courage, but it was through my shyness that I learned that courage was already available to me. I was hesitant about sharing in meetings, afraid I would be ridiculed. I sat in the back and kept my secrets to myself. Still, I heard my own story so often that I began to lose my fear. Calling upon a reserve of courage I didn't know existed, I managed to approach some members who seemed to have a similar experience. In time, I had spoken with so many people one-to-one -one, that sharing in, a, in the group became possible, even comfortable. In my fear, I had simply been removed. If my fear had simply been removed, I might never have known that I am capable of acting on my own behalf. I didn't need enough strength to get up in front of the room full of strangers. I only needed enough to keep me taking tiny steps. I had exactly enough strength and courage to reach my goal. So anything and everything about me can be used for my good. If I feel insecure or frightened today, I will remember that my fear is a signal that there is something for me to learn. And then there's a quote from, as we understood, it may not be the answer I want, but I have to remember that it may be what I need. Very nice. Very nice. Anything and everything about me can be used for my good. Insecure or not. Just getting through learning how to be comfortable with others. That's definitely, definitely part of the program. Definitely part of the program. I couldn't do this without just taking one step in front of the other, taking one step in front of the other saying, okay, I want to do this, this, and this. I want to learn how to put the zoom on the YouTube. I want to be able to read my material every day so that I can keep healing. And I thought gives me purpose. And uh, I got to learn, I'm learning, I'm getting courage every day to do this. So um, 
you know, it's something that's good for me and hopefully it's something good for you too. So that's it, we're done. Yay, we made it. So uh, we'll go ahead and do the serenity prayer. Say the serenity prayer with me. Let's close your eyes down. Take a nice deep breath in and out and lower your shoulders and just relax. Put your feet on the floor. Just feel grounded here and even. Moment of silence for the sick and suffering. Let go of anger and resentments, all that you can. Just let God's will take care of that. It's not for us to, to, um, to hold on to. We need to let that go. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done. Amen. And I'll see you tomorrow.